The primal path of the totem warrior begins with a spiritual journey that ends with a spirit animal and protector. Hey fellow game masters, I'm Richard Quiner. Welcome back to the Daily D20, your daily dose of all things tabletop role-playing games, helping you build your world and master your game. As we dive into the information about the Totem Warrior, I again invite you to leave a comment down below and click on the link in the description to go vote and rate the Totem Warrior Primal Path so we can rank this among the others. In the flavor of Totem Warrior, the idea is the Totem Warrior is a barbarian that has formed a special bond with an animal, their spirit animal. It's, it's rare that the Totem Warrior gains special bonds with multiple animals, but again, that's DM's discretion. When one becomes a Totem Warrior, they pick a spirit animal that they have a special bond with, and then they keep that throughout the course of their life as a Totem Warrior. If you're thinking of cool flavor for your character in Dungeons & Dragons, the Totem animal could be something that's very connected to a tribe that the Barbarian might come from, or just something that maybe they've had an experience in the wild and they've chosen this spirit animal as their guide. A lot of different options can come into play, and I know as a lot of players, we like having the idea of spirit animals and spirit guides. We like that idea, so this is a fun way to give a barbarian kind of a, an animalistic nature, so to speak. When you become a totem warrior, though, you do need something. You need a totem. So most players, you'll need to go on a little adventure to find or make a totem that might have some part of this animal that is your spirit animal involved to imbue it with the power to power your rage and your barbaric nature. Right off the bat, as a totem warrior, you get the Spirit Seeker ability, which means you can now commune with nature. You can cast the Beast Sense and speak with animal spells as rituals as a barbarian. That's pretty cool. That gives you a lot of things you can talk to. You can communicate with the nature and your surroundings and find out more about what's going on depending on what your party needs in that moment. Also at level three, you gain the Totem Spirit ability, which is really when you become a Totem Warrior. This is when you pick a spirit animal, you make a totem for that spirit animal, usually involving some sort of part of the animal, like a hair or claws or something like that. And oftentimes these barbarians take on a little physical trait of that animal. They could get extra hairy if they are a bear, they could get yellow eyes for eagles, different things like that could come into play for your barbarian to make them a little more interesting looking. So what else do you get at this level? It depends on the animal that you've chosen. If you decided to take a bear as your spirit animal, you're going to gain resistance to all types of damage except psychic. Now this is crazy powerful because psychic is only one type of damage and there's so many other damage types and you'll have resistance to all of them while you're raging so wow just wow good choice here if you decide to pick the eagle as your spirit animal any attackers will have disadvantage on opportunity attacks against you plus you'll be able to use dash as a bonus action increasing your mobility around the map the elk is a very swift animal so when you choose the elk as your spirit animal you gain an extra 15 feet to your movement speed which is a lot. The strength and power of the tiger will imbue you if you choose this as your spirit animal. You will gain an extra 10 feet jumping distance and three feet jumping height. And last of the pre-written spirit animals, the wolf gives your allies advantage when attacking an enemy within five feet of you. Those five creatures are the spirit animals listed in the Dungeons and Dragons books. If you want a different spirit animal, it's also fun to work with your DM and come up with something that might be your spirit guide. Maybe you have a spirit guide of a penguin or a platypus or a uh, griffin if you want to get more fantasy. You can probably pick any type of spirit animal you want. You'll just have to work with the DM to come up with abilities that really tie into that animal but are not too powerful. That's the important thing. You don't, at these low levels, you don't want to be be too ridiculous with your spirit animal. Maybe that's a video we'll do. Maybe we'll do a thing where we'll sit and we'll make some spirit animals and some spirit animal abilities that you can choose from. That sounds fun, actually. Yeah, we'll do that sometime. At level six, you gain what's called the aspect of the beast. Now, when you level up, when you gain this level six, you can pick the same totem that you picked before, or you can pick a different spirit animal at this point and gain those abilities from this ability. But that's really up to you. It's if you want to go with the flavor of sticking with one animal, that's cool. If you want to kind of mix and match, it's cool too. The rules say it's okay, so it's okay. And if your DM chooses it's okay, then that's also okay. 
But what happens at level six is you gain some sort of magic passive ability from this creature. For a bear, for example, your carrying capacity is doubled. So if you're playing a game where you're actually tracking car carrying capacity, this will work for you. If you choose eagle, your vision, you can see a mile away as if it's about 100 feet away, you know, eagle eye kind of thing. And darkness doesn't hinder your perception like it normally would because you've got eagle eyes. If you choose the elk, yours and 10 of your companions, movement speed is doubled while traveling. Whether you're mounted or on foot, you're gonna be moving a lot quicker throughout the world that you're in if you pick elk. If you choose tiger, you gain two new skills to be proficient in. You can pick from athletics, acrobatics, stealth, and survival, and you gain proficiency in those. This is kind of a weird one though, because a lot of barbarians, you already have all of those options early on. So if you choose, if you know you're going to be a totem warrior and you know you want to be a tiger, you can use your early skill proficiencies to pick something else that you might not have picked had you not had this other option coming up further down the line. And last, with a wolf spirit animal in your pocket, while you are moving at traveling speed, which is a lot faster and a little more quickly paced, you will still be able to track animals and move stealthily. So you could move at traveling pace through kind of dangerous environments if you so choose. At level 10, you get to become a spirit walker, which just means you get to commune more closely with your spirit animal. As a ritual, you can cast the spell commune with nature, and then in that case, the spirit animal will kind of show up to you and guide you through the information you need. This is a ritual spell, so it takes a little more time to cast, but still gives you a little bit of a divination and information gathering technique for your barbarian. And last, at level 14, you gain totemic attunement. That's two three-syllable words, and it's a lot of power in your hand. Again, at level 14, you can stick with the same animal that you picked before, or you can very often pick a different one if you so choose. It's between you and your DM how you want to play that. But you get certain abilities from each of these animals. Here is the breakdown. If you've chosen bear, any enemies within five feet of you have disadvantage while attacking any of your allies other than you. This just gives you a good tanky disposition. If you chose eagle, you gain basic flight to up to your regular walking movement speed. And when you end your turn, if you're aloft, you're going to fall. So it just gets you around a little quicker, but it's not super powerful. If you decide to follow the path of the elk, you can use a bonus action while you're moving to try and bowl someone over and knock them prone. As a tiger, if you charge an enemy from 20 feet away, you get a extra melee attack as a bonus action. And if you've picked the wolf with a melee attack on a creature, you can then use a bonus action to knock that creature prone, giving advantage to all your allies who are in the range and want to get involved on it. It's basically a pack hunting kind of scenario with the wolf. The Totem Warrior has so many combinations you can build. You don't, like I said, you don't have to pick the same animal for every time you get a, a different ability. Do you want to build a barbarian that is still all about combat and being a fighter? Or do you want to build a barbarian that has a little more utility in strange situations? That's entirely up to you. So leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Totem Warrior Primal Path. If you like it, if you hate it, just let me know in the comments below. And also go ahead and click the link in the description and go vote. Rate this primal path so we can take a look at them. I'll compile all the data and we'll, we'll compare all the primal paths of the barbarians in one big video. So do that as well. And again, I've been Richard Quiner. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see on the channel, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. You can also click over here to see more videos in this playlist, or over here to see what YouTube suggests you watch from my channel.